how's it going? Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So do you own a KTM 390 Adventure or do you want to own a KTM 390 Adventure and take it off road, maybe push the bike and yourself to the limits? If you answered yes to any of these, then you really need to watch this video. So all joking aside, I'm putting together this video to show you the Black Dog Cycle Works skid plate that they've developed for the KTM 390 Adventure and why, if you're planning to take this off-road, you really need to consider putting this on your bike and getting rid of the stock one and really don't consider putting any of the other ones on there. There are some considerations to this skid plate <clears throat> pebble deflector that you need to take into account when deciding which skid plate that you want. So I'm going to go through all those things and we'll do the install of this skid plate. Now, before we get too far into this, I want to let you know I am not sponsored by Black Dog Cycle Works. I paid for this with my own money because I wanted to protect my bike. But I know that there's a lot of you out there that are interested in this bike and are maybe riding this bike. So I wanted to go through the install to show you what it's like and then take it out and beat the heck out of it just as it's designed to be done. Just a quick note, I pre-ordered this uh, skid plate from, from Black Dog Cycle Works. And before it shipped, Kurt from the company gave me a call to make sure I understood that I had to pull the exhaust off before putting it on to make sure I still wanted the skid plate. It's not a really big process to do. I was fine with it, but uh, it was really incredible that they called me before shipping this. And the experience that I've had with them so far, because I've talked to them a couple different times about some, some different issues, is it's been really great. My experience with the motorcycle industry is not always uh, customer friendly. So if this is something you're considering and you're not sure about the install, call them. Um, I'm going to go through it probably not step by step, but uh, in enough detail that if it's something you're considering, you know what you have to do. So stick around and let's get this installed so we can start beating the heck out of it. All right, the instructions that came with the skid plate, they're, they're pretty straightforward. There are some things that you have to do, like I mentioned before, uh, drop the exhaust, the uh, manifold coming out of the engine needs to be loosened up just to make it a little bit easier to get some things off and get the brackets in. I, I don't find that to be that big of a deal. It just adds a little bit of time to the installation. Now, because I'm filming this, it's probably going to triple the amount of time it takes to install the skid plate. But going through the instructions myself, if I wasn't filming, I think I could probably do it in under an hour. The tool list on here looks really good. It's, um, it's nothing sophisticated. Uh, they did call for one thing, one of these universal drives, which they refer to as a wobbler, so I find that uh, amusing. And maybe that's the uh, uh, commercial standard name for that, don't know. One tip that I have, if you were going to do this installation, use the tool kit that's on your bike. This is my inflation uh, puncture kit, but on the other side I took off my actual tool kit. And that way, if there's anything that I may not have in there that I need to add because I'm adding parts to the bike, then I know what to add to my toolkit to make sure I always have that. So my recommendation is anytime you work on your bike, use a toolkit that you travel with. So let's, uh, let's get this old skid plate taken off and get started on installing the new one. All right, I'm not sure how well you can see this. This was the added skid plate that I put on from my R1200. I never used it on the R1200. I replaced that skid plate right away. It's pretty nicked up, um, so you can see that it got abused. I actually had to pound out a dent that was in here from going up and over overpass and the really rocky, chunky stuff. So um, this should uh, let you know why you need to put on a bigger, beefier skid plate. I've got the skid plate off, and you can see that there's this big cutout. If you didn't already know this, and that's because this is made of plastic, and they had to cut this out in order to keep it from the exhaust from melting it. So if you have a stock uh, skid plate, your exhaust is exposed in this part of it. You have a little bit of metal up and around the header pipe, but it's pretty exposed, which is why I added this to cover that part up. So while I was riding, I wasn't going to mash the exhaust. That was loud. Um, so yeah, and the other problem with this is I'll, as I um, take the bracket off is this skid plate mounts directly to a bracket that attaches directly to the engine and there's no amount of give or crush to it. I've seen other 
skid plate mounts where they can crush a little bit so all that energy isn't getting transmitted up into the engine. That is not the case on this, which is why the Black Dog Cycle Works skid plate is so good is that there are no engine mounts. It surrounds the engine without actually touching it so that you can take impacts and it won't get transmitted into the bottom of the case, into the sump. All right, I'm gonna take the uh, bracket, this uh, skid plate bracket off of the, the engine here. Here is the skid plate bracket that I just took off underneath here. And this bolted directly to the engine. So any impact was gonna get transmitted into the uh, bolt into the sump of the engine. So. I'm very happy to be replacing this. All of the other skid plates that you're going to find, the KTM Power Part, aluminum one, and I've seen a few uh, aftermarket ones like the SW Motec, they use this existing mount to put their skid plate on. So it might be aluminum all the way around, but you're still transmitting all that energy force up into the engine. So I, with this bike, in good conscience, I can't promote anything other than the Black Dog Cycle Works. And, I'm, I'm not getting paid to put this on. I'm not sponsored by them. It's just in order to save your engine, if you're going to go off road, you don't want those forces transmitted up into the bottom of the engine. And you might be thinking that all I ride is forest roads and they're all smooth and nice. But the problem with forest roads, as I found, is they grade those quite frequently. And when they do that, they churn up a lot of big rocks. And when those big rocks get churned up, you may not see them. There's going to be lurkers in that powdery dust that are going to get kicked up. So um, if you're going to go off road, I can't recommend enough replacing with, with, a, with this particular skid plate. First step in getting this uh, installed is I've got to loosen up the exhaust manifold bolt. Can the silence off. And this is where the wobbler comes in handy. And this bolt comes all the way out. And there's a note that said it may require some jiggling. Oh, I've got to undo the top cap bolt here. And the one um, tool that's missing off the list is an eight millimeter socket. So I'll let them know that that was missing. Um, and I'll get this. I jumped ahead a step and went to the bottom of the cat and resonator. If I had followed the instructions, I would have done this first. And so far, this is this is nothing more than just a take apart, put back together project. I'm gonna put some pliers on here so I've got some leverage. Bend it down just a little. There we go. So that would be my recommendation. Just grab it with some pliers. I used a screwdriver just to push it down just a little bit. I couldn't get it with my fingers. It just it was bound up a little too much. But it's out. So now we can move on to the next step. I'm just pulling the resonator out. It's a bit tight. All right, this step here, um, the instructions are to put blue Loctite on the bolt. So I'm gonna do that. And this was a little tricky because the kickstand attaches here. I would recommend doing this maybe with uh, this part here with two people if you don't have a motorcycle stand. If you have a stand, put it on the stand. Um, or some sort of way to sit it upright. This is a little tricky because the kickstand is on that. And I'm not going to show you how I did it because I don't want anybody following my lead in case you drop the bike on yourself. Right, first bracket on. All right, they're getting the resonator um, put back up on the, the little eight millimeter bolts. There's these little um, sleeve spacers. They go on both sides, so make sure you have those in place before you roll it back up. Um, otherwise, you're going to be shimmying it back and forth. So just pinch it and it should slide back up. Alright, just a quick tip. I made a mistake and I tightened the header up too much. So leave the header a little loose after you get the bolts on so that you can slide the, uh, the cat into the resonator. And then you can tighten up the uh, clamp around it. step we're going to be installing this bracket um, where this lower bolt is going to go through the resonator and then there's a threaded bolt that that's going to connect to 
and this is going to be the bottom of where the skid plate attaches to. Um, the 10 by 25 which is the really large bolt in there and then this long one that will go through the resonator and then a small button head that goes on the back side. All of these need Loctite. Or these two need Loctite so I'll put those on and get them, get them installed. Yeah, I'm going to get the big bolt put in first and then I'm going to do the other side and then I'll slide the, the resonator in. The resonator bolt back in but make sure you don't get it confused with the one that you took out like I started to. Uh, the one that you took out has the pan head on it and the one that you're going to put in needs the washer. And this one is slightly shorter, so it should be easier to get in. So let's put some. You know you want to get in there. Right, this is kind of tight getting in there. I'm using a, a mallet, rubber mallet, just to gently tap it until it gets to the until it gets to the threads, and then I can tighten it. With... Okay, that one's in. Now I think I need to use the 17 for the big one. And get the wobbler on there. Yeah. yeah. All right, now it's the side brackets. I've got to remove the stock nut from the skid plate, or the, sorry, from the crash bar. All right, so I'm that. Got a nylon thread. Put that on. I'm not gonna tighten all this to have final tightness until I've got the skid plate in place so I know exactly where it's going to settle because this has some movement in it and I don't, I don't want to have to keep tightening and loosening things just to get it set right. So we'll just leave it a little loose like that and then we'll come back and tighten it after it's on. Alright, now I need to put these clips in. That one's in. This one in, make sure I get the threads on the right side. This is the inside. Skip plate is on. It, uh, man, I really like the wraparound design that they've put together here. It feels like it's um, in closer to the engine and protects uh, the engine itself, the sides of it better. And then with the wraparound up here, it's definitely better than the plastic that we had on here before. I will uh, get a video shot of it all the way around. So if this is something you want to do, um, I also saw some people when I did the oil change on this complain that there were too many bolts to take off to take the skid plate and then to take the bracket off. So now to do an oil change you've got six bolts that you take off. You can drop the pan, the skid plate to get to everything. So it'll be a lot easier and faster to do uh, maintenance with this skid plate. So maybe even that's enough of a reason to do it besides the, uh, the protection that it will give you. If you're wondering about ground clearance it looks like uh, adding this skid plate, you lose about a half half inch of ground clearance. Um, but for the added protection and knowing that I can match this into stuff, this bike has limitations. It's not meant to be an enduro bike. Travel, adventure riding, camping, uh, hitting forest roads, things like that. But to protect the engine uh, is much better. I would still go and take it up. Uh, over pass and, and some of the alpine passes and definitely I would do imaging pass now with this skid plate. I wouldn't have done it without it and I turned it around because of it but I would definitely do it now with this even though I lost a little bit of uh, ground clearance but rocks and stuff will just uh, deflect off of that. Um, if you're wondering what to do with your old skid plate this is what I recommend. You're never going to want to use it again and it's just going to take up space in your garage so get rid of it and the extra hardware that you have left, what I recommend you do is take about half of the nuts and bolts, put them in a bag, and throw those in your uh, tool kit. I keep my tool kit in this dry bag. And then if there was any uh, items that you didn't have in your bag that you had to pull out of your toolbox, make sure you add those to your tool kit. 
Uh, you don't have an 8 millimeter socket in here, so that's something I need to add. So that was helpful from that standpoint. Final thoughts just on the installation. I had some issues with the exhaust getting it put back together just because I got impatient, started tightening stuff up too much. Leave it a little bit loose and then get it all fit together first, starting at the, uh, the silencer, tighten that up and then kind of squish it all together. Um, and then you shouldn't have any trouble. The finish of this is fantastic. I like the way it matches the color of the engine. And I like how the skid plate wraps up around the engine too to provide additional protection. Especially on the stator side, there's a little lip there to keep from hanging that edge up. So if you do hit some rocks, hopefully it'll, it'll hit in that spot. And now all that's left is to get out and just test this thing. I've got all summer to do that. Hopefully when things start opening up and go from there. So it is, um, these skid plates are a little bit expensive, more than you're going to see on the others but the insurance and protection it provides makes it well worth it and they are well built, they're thick and the people that I know that have had these, they take a beating. So I'm looking forward to doing that to this skid plate. Thanks for watching. Questions, comments, leave those down below. Hopefully I'll be able to answer them for you. If I can't answer any questions, then I recommend you go and you just talk to Black Dog Cycle Works directly and get out there, do some riding, ride safe. Thanks for watching and I will see you out there.